Unexplained phenomena and paranormal manifestations are usually thought of as objects moving, apparitions appearing, or hearing strange noises. Sometimes, though, very bizarre paranormal events occur that are way outside the scope of what the majority of people experience. In today's episode, we will examine a story from a Georgia elderly couple that experienced something truly strange and defying reason. On September 8, 1987, Minnie Weston was relaxing in her bathtub after spending the day taking care of her ailing husband. After Ms. Weston was finished with her bath, she stepped out of the tub and was astonished to see a red, bubbling liquid on the floor. The same blood-like liquid was oozing down the walls. Minnie initially thought her husband Willie was bleeding from an injury, but soon she saw he was sound asleep. After waking him up, she confirmed he was fine and let him know what was happening. As the couple moved from room to room, the red substance was all over the house. It came up from the hallway floors and soaked into the living room carpet. It was coming down the walls everywhere. At this point, the couple was more confused than scared. They were convinced it was blood, but from what? The couple speculated that a wounded animal might have entered their home, but their search yielded no evidence. Also, they had had no history of having any type of rodents, and the house had been locked with the alarm set. They inspected Willie's dialysis machine even, and it looked good and everything was intact. So the couple decided to call 911, and soon first responders, the fire department, and the police would all arrive on the scene. The EMTs inspected the couple all over to ensure that no wounds were present. Brenda Dipple, a lab technician, collected blood samples and would test the substance to confirm it was indeed blood. The police questioned the couple whether anyone else had entered into the home. Minnie and Willie confirmed that they were the only ones in the house the entire night. After reviewing the timeline of that night, the couple secured their doors and set their security alarm at 9.30 p.m. that evening strongly suggesting that a break-in was unlikely. The blood started to appear around 11.30 p.m. of that night. Police themselves were perplexed as they were not sure how to proceed. There were no indications of homicide or any other criminal activity. The property managers, a father and son, both named Alfred, arrived, shining flashlights around the basement. There were no burst pipes, and they found more bloodstains beneath the television stand in the basement. Over the years, several theories have been formed around the blood as various investigators ranging from detectives to paranormal researchers have investigated the case. The first theory concerns previous occupants of the home. Before the Winstons lived there, the residents of the house were Albert Thompson and his wife. Albert was a black man who worked for the Federal Housing Authority and was involved in a car accident in 1950 where he was hit by a white driver and eventually died from internal bleeding. The driver was let off with a warning and not prosecuted. As Albert returned home after the accident, he would soon pass away in the home. Creepily, the blood manifested around the same time Albert was T-boned and ultimately died on October 31st. Many connect the pain and suffering Albert experienced and also the injustice as to the reason why those walls bled. Others, though, point to a more logical explanation. Some say that someone with access to a blood bank broke in the home and spread it around as some sort of sick joke. As news of the case spread, it brought international attention. 
reporters gathered on the couple's lawn and called night and day. Around six months after the event happened, Kurt Rowlett, a paranormal researcher, began to investigate the strange event. His interviews unveiled how many felt about the event. She strongly insisted that the blood was just rust and mud caused by a hot water heater that burst in the basement. However, crime lab testing by forensics confirmed that the substance was indeed type O human blood, the most common type. Kurt believed that many refused to accept that the substance was blood because she couldn't face living in a haunted house. Unfortunately, the interview did not provide definitive answers to what happened after this strange event. Since the night, the blood seemingly came out of nowhere. No other strange events have occurred in the home. So what exactly occurred at this Atlanta, Georgia residence? It seems odd that teenagers or someone else would spill blood all over the house in order to prank someone. Many initially reported that the blood came up through the wood floors. If that had happened, it pretty much rules out a prank, as no teenager or anyone would be able to ooze blood upward through a floor. There are more recent cases of walls bleeding, but these all had logical explanations. In 2022, an article in the New York Post examined a case where a woman's walls were supposedly bleeding. It turned out liquefied rust was the cause. A common reason this does occur, walls bleeding, is also something known as surfacant leaching. Still, it's important to note the substance that was found at the scene that night was tested and identified as O blood from a human. It appears there was a supernatural element in play in this case. The evidence appears to be pretty strong, with a variety of parties investigating the house. One other central question involves future paranormal activity. While many and other residents have not reported anything, some speculate that it could have occurred again while many lived in the home. Perhaps it wasn't blood, but something else. It's very likely that if it did, with many's denial of owning a haunted house, she may have not reported any future activity. Still, that's something we will never know. Perhaps we will witness a case like this in the future that provides more clarity, but it seems unlikely given just how strange and bizarre this event was. <laughs>